Hey, what's going on guys? Alex Mazzucchini here from Mr. Build It. Welcome back to another week in the workshop. If you're brand new to the channel, welcome. We're just a bunch of DIYers, not afraid to try things, not afraid to fail. So if that's something that's along your side of the trail, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you'll know when these videos come out. Now, with that being put aside, with Halloween right around the corner, we wanted to make something that every homeowner can make as Halloween decor. So what we're thinking is we're gonna call this the Palawood Jack-O-Lantern. With that being said, let's get into the video. Let's go. To get started, I picked up a palette that I wasn't using, specifically one that wasn't in terrible condition. It's still pretty light in color. Now, technique that I use for disassembling a palette is usually the same. I use a Demon Demon blade from Diablo to cut the outside uh, nails out with the reciprocating saw. And then I get the first nail down the middle, mostly because the blade won't reach for the second one. And then I will take a pry bar and I'll wiggle it back and forth, allowing for the last nail to come out. Nine times out of 10, this works exceptionally well. Then to get the remainder uh, broken nails and whatnot out, what I'll do is down the middle, I'll flip it over, take a hammer, bust out the one nail that we didn't cut. And then the one nail that is cut, I would take a center punch, hit it out and then pry it out as well. And to save ourselves some time, for the ends, we won't have to worry about prying those nails out. We'll just use our chop saw or miter saw and cut the ends off just enough that you don't have them in the way. Now for this project, we're gonna preserve as much of the pallet wood aging as we can, but then the other part we need to straighten it out to make it a little bit easier to work with. To do so, we're gonna throw some of these pallets on our jointer. We're gonna do one edge and one flat surface, not taking out more than about one or two sixteenths of an inch. And like any other project, when it comes to milling, we do want to throw it on the table saw to create a matching parallel edge. That way we can actually glue this project up accordingly. So the big idea here is to create three individual hexagons. And to do so, we're going to take our pallet wood, mark it at six inches and create two both ended 30 degree cuts. Two 30 degree cuts equals a 60 degree angle, which is typical for your hexagon. Once you've gotten the first one down, you can then use it as your measuring marker to kind of speed up your process to make sure all your pieces are consistent the same length. Now, when we have created 18 identical pieces, we're ready to glue up. The way I do it, I do the small angle, the small side in, the outside out. Being pallet wood, the tape will stick kind of difficult, so kind of bear with it. I just used regular old duct tape. Once it was done, I was able to flip it all over together, lay down my wood glue. I used Tyvon too, like you guys have already heard in my previous videos. And then I roll it up, tape it up, and very gently, very carefully, I bring a ratchet strap and I give it enough pressure to kind of give it a nice tight joint without breaking it apart or pushing all the wood glue out. This would be a good time to use your tape measure to measure out to make sure that all the sides are roughly as even as possible. While our hexagons are drying at this moment, we're gonna take the opportunity to glue up the panels for the top and the bottom of our pumpkin. And so just like any table glue up, take your time, make sure the pieces are straight. Keep in mind, because this is pallet wood, it's not perfect types of wood, even though we did mill it, give it gentle enough pressure that it just lines up perfectly without squeezing out too much glue. So the next day I came down and I removed all of our clamping mechanism. That would be the ratchet straps and the duct tape. I ensured both top and bottom edges of every hexagon was as even as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as even as possible. Go over it with a sander if you need to, to level it out. Then I applied the wood glue both on the tops and the bottoms of every tier, stacked them together and lined them up as perfectly as I could. Keep in mind there will be some uneven, unperfect edges, but that's okay, this is pallet wood. And then use my F clamps to kind of sandwich and stack it and clamp it together. At this point, I'm using very light pressure because at this point, this piece is pretty fragile. It's not too bad, but it's also not indestructible. So just be gentle. While that was drying, I then took the panel glue that we did earlier, sliced it in half to create a top and bottom piece of our pumpkin here, and I set it on top. Then I traced the hexagon over to create a perfect match. I also marked out where the 12 o'clock spots were to know that there's only one way it could fit. Once it was done, we were ready to bring it to our bandsaw and cut this puppy out. On my bandsaw, I'm using a three quarter inch blade specifically to make that cut as straight as possible. Once everything was cut out, leaving as much pencil mark as I could, I brought it over to my bench top belt sander to clean up as close to it as possible, mostly because I want a nice tight fit when they get installed. 
When it came down to installing the tops and the bottoms, my strategy was simple. Leave the exposed weathered pallet wood facing to the top. So when installing the bottom first, I found where the 12 o'clock points were, sat the shell right over it, and it sit and installed flush. Took a damp rag, wiped all the excess wood glue out, used a little mallet to really seat it flush, and be done with that part. Flipped it back over, and I did the same for the top. Really make sure you take your time to don't push it too much in because if you do, well, now you took a little bit of surface area away and it doesn't sit flush. After we got done drawing our goofy jack lantern face, we need to create a pilot hole to insert the jigsaw blade. I'm using these Bosch Daredevil spade bits. This particular one is a little too big and I realized there's too much material to move, being a hardwood. So I switched over to a half inch spade bit and as you can see here, it worked perfectly, punch right through it. I'll leave a link in the description. I like these spade bits because they have that little screw up front to make sure you get into it perfectly. So then I moved over to my jigsaw. I introduced it right into the pilot hole that we screwed out and we started kind of carving away our jack-o'-lantern for the holidays. Afterwards, to clean up any of the tear outs and kind of blend everything in, I used 80 grit sandpaper to lightly blend everything together and get it ready for my benchtop sander. At the benchtop sander, I brought it to a 45 degree angle and I put a nice chamfer all along the entire edge to give it a three dimensional look. When it came down to creating the type of lid, I wanted to give the same lid that traditional pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns have, where it kind of goes at an angle and it doesn't fall in. So to accommodate this, I took my Dremel Multimax and then a variety of the cutter heads, and this particular one does the wood and metal. So I kind of placed it at an angle and I went and traced out the entire hexagon. Once the cut was all the way through, I removed it and then just took some 80 grit sandpaper to clean everything up, smooth, flush, and make it really nice looking. For the pumpkin stem, I used this old branch that I found in my backyard from a poplar tree. So I took it to my bandsaw and I angled all these abstract cuts to kind of give it more of an artsy kind of look. After all the cuts were done, I cleaned all the burn marks from the blade off on my sander, and then I took two one and a quarter inch screws and screwed it in from the bottom of the lid from my jack-o'-lantern. Once everything was lightly sanded, I used this aerosolized satin clear coat to apply about three or four coats, being for the outside I wanted it to be protected. Once it was done, it was ready to go in the front door and see how it looks. And to give it the final finished look, I used a 200 lumen Husky LED magnet hook from the Home Depot. It has magnets on the back and I just magnetize it to the screws that are right underneath the stem. Installed it and voila, we're ready for Halloween. Well, that is it for me this week. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. It does mean the world to me. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell. If you want to see more of the details on the tools that I use or follow me on my social media profiles, it'll be down in the description down below. Tune in out this week. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.